Hello everybody, welcome to a new video. Today we have our top 12 quarterbacks in the 2024 NFL Draft class. That's right, I said 12. We have a deeper look at some of these guys and then we'll get towards the top where my rankings might be a little different than you've seen. But the most important part of this video, in my opinion, is the depth in this class and we're really getting to see and dive into the top 12 instead of, you know, you see those top five, six, sevens. We're gonna go a little bit deeper here and give you guys some more insight. We're gonna start at number 12, work up to number one. So fast forward if you really don't care about something of these guys but we're going to talk about number 12 first and that'll be Devin Leary the University of Kentucky quarterback comes out at 6'1 215 I have three games of tape on him and I think he's more of the long-term project a team would be happy to have as like a third stringer someone on your practice squad to kind of develop over time and give you a a solid maybe backup best case scenario for Devin Leary with some uh, good arm talent I really do like his arm and we'll kind of hop into that and what he does do well and what he doesn't he can zip the ball to the sideline on one play and then throw a nice touch pass over the top uh, the, the very next play displaying like he's got the good change up I'd say so he can throw an absolute a rifle a dart whatever you want to call it on a nice slant route or an out route and then the next play there's a linebacker in the way and he has to touch pass and make it over the linebacker into a receiver or running backs arms i think he does a good job throwing that sort of you know, change up i guess I, I would call it and i think he really does show glimpses i think he uh, shows some of the tools and and most of the things you need as a quarterback in the nfl but he's never really consistent with them and that was kind of where we're going off traits here i have someone that scores better than devin leary on the tape and I I think he actually is like the lowest in the class, but you got to look at it and say, okay, he shows the glimpses. There's the traits, the tools there. Nothing's consistent now under good coaching. Can he clean things up? Can he really work his way to a role in the NFL? Now, I don't think he'd ever end up being a starter. I don't think he is like your Brock Purdy archetype either. I don't think he processes that well. I think he is kind of average when it comes to that. So it's good compared to some of the guys lower in this class, but I just don't think he's consistent enough anywhere. He's got arm angles. His uh, play fakes look kind of solid. He's got the sleight of hand i think uh, enough to to fake a defense out for a, a good second or two to to make him at least think and like again I, I really do like his arm i think he has lots to work on when it comes to his arm but i i, I like his arm i love his arm a lot there's uh there's a few plays where he kind of just lobs it down the field and it just looks good it doesn't look hard for him to just throw it up and i think he threw one mile per hour slower than joe milton at the combine and if i remember correctly that was 61 or 60 miles an hour for devin leary which was like second at the combine showing it, it's actually pretty impressive what his arm you know is capable of now i didn't think he was especially great in the pocket i don't think he's an amazing athlete his improv was all right and i didn't think his like poise and everything like that was so great and he's not even the biggest dude ever and I don't think he processes well. His accuracy is uh, inconsistent at best. And the mental awareness to kind of just read the field, make the decisions. I don't think that that was amazing from Leary. Anyways, he did have some uh, pretty bad picks in there. But again, I, I think he is a good player i like his arm but again just has a lot to work on and actually i do think he is a little bit hesitant at times too you'll see him you know like want to throw with anticipation and timing but he'll wait till he sees it open so he's like oh and then he kind of pauses for a second waits for it to either get open or, or he takes a sack or whatever he might be out of this uh out of sync with his receivers something just looks off in his throws between depth timing accuracy and etc the things when it comes to what i was kind of just talking about the hesitant part of his game it, it, he just might be out of sync maybe one year with these guys wasn't enough and i don't think his ball placement was good whatsoever he had two batted pass and one half of football and it doesn't even look like he's trying to get the ball past the defensive line and kind of just sees it and throws it instead of trying to avoid the the big guys up front putting their arms up and trying to get in to disrupt that and i think he's got quite heavy feet he doesn't really sit in the pocket and stay light kind of bounce around keeping on his toes i think he does a lot of the uh the anchoring down reading the field and then he'll adjust and throw it's not kind of bounce 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 kind of read he's more of a a planted guy and you don't really like to see that but devin leary overall again project and probably a third string practice guy or a practice squad guy right away and he might not end up being drafted but i think his arm's just good enough to be a late day three type of guy maybe like as a fringe sixth seventh rounder we'll have to see when it comes to devin leary but i could see him going undrafted and i can see him going as high as like the 
bottom of the fifth round possibly and that might even be a little bit of a jump because i'm quite a fan of his arm and you guys did see on the previous little graphic there the i score and i'll explain that for you the i score is basically a film grade built using the most important slash uh, or most important trait slash things you can have at each position taking the few major evaluation criteria points and grading each criteria point out of 20 10 being average so like if you see something based off 20, I think right in the middle, like the average is 10 for the average draft prospect. For example, say you watch five games of tape on Marvin Harrison Jr. And then you take a look at the top five things you look for in a receiver. Based off what you saw on the tape, you'd reach each trait according to what you watched on tape, one through 20. Hopefully that makes sense. And uh, whenever you see the I score rating in my videos or around the channel in general, there will most likely be a number in parentheses or just a number next to it. And that's how many games of tape I've watched on the player and I'm rating. And the more tape, the better if his grade is good with like five games of tape that's really good but if it's like good in only one game then you kind of have to take that with a grain of salt and now remember the i score has zero credibility and no history nothing to like reflect back on this is like i said a film grade just to put a number next to these guys' name based off what i saw on tape giving me and you guys a good gauge comparing the players as a you know overall in their position groups so hopefully that makes enough sense and we'll hop back right back into the quarterback rankings talia tagaviola i don't know if it's actually tolia talia like I, I can't be bothered with some of the names in this draft class because i am very much known for butchering them maryland quarterback he actually wanted to go back to school got denied eligibility comes out at 5'10", 200 pounds, not not ideal as his size you'll see on the I score, not great. And uh, three games of tape on him as well, but I think he's a guy that you can draft and you kind of know where he's at and have the two to three years in the NFL and then he could be a very solid backup. And especially if he sees enough play time in the league, say he gets drafted and he's put in a situation, he plays all the preseason games and he actually ends up playing like, you know, fourth quarter, you're up 30 points, put your backup in. So your starter doesn't get hurt. And Talia, if he sees enough of those situations, I think seeing the game would help him a lot. We'll kind of get into like how big and how tall the ceiling is for him and kind of just what he is. I don't think he has a howitzer of an arm, but definitely understands when and where he needs to put zip on the ball. And that is one thing I look at a lot is the guys that know when and where to use the velocity on the ball and then touch like again i said the same thing with devin leary his changeup's really nice and a lot of these you know um you know, like drake may and jj mccarthy on the little bit on the younger side they just like to just absolutely throw the ball and that there's no problem with that but i think talia has enough under the ball or i guess to to throw it and and hit his mark with there being zip and then when there doesn't need to be as much and you might need some touch to make it easier on the receiver i think he gets that man he's a flashy player i think that's something that i didn't really expect coming in i thought he'd be a little bit of a uh I guess hard faced leader type, I guess, but no, he actually was flashy. He's got some no look pass uh passes, he's got some fun celebrations in there and catching snaps one handed and then uplifting confidence about him that just kind of seems to surround the team. And I don't know, I really like that. And he seems athletic enough to at least make a defense question whether or not he's going to run, meaning he adds a dimension to the defense's like I guess game plan, right? They come in, you're like, okay, watch out he can run <laughs> like how likely is it like make him at least guess i think he's there i don't think he's a, an amazing athlete but i think he's got the ability to again make a defense question whether or not he's gonna take off he's good he's good throwing over the middle of the field but he needs time in the pocket to execute throwing over the middle of the field if that makes sense it's kind of you know he needs time to put the pieces together not to make the mistakes throwing over the middle now when he was rushed and kind of like pressure obviously right he wasn't as great throwing over the middle i think he's like a live wire too when we're talking about pocket passing especially throwing over the middle he's a live wire like he's there's constant movement twitching and it looks like he had a lot of caffeine before each game and that's just kind of what it looks like i'm not saying uh he's like uh you know a starbucks addict or anything you know he just kind of looks amped up and he's moving around he's twitching a lot in the pocket and at times it's good he's good at avoiding some of the initial pass rush that he might see like get in kind of quick but it's sometimes unnecessary though he's short i think i've only seen one batted pass in the three games i watched which was really good and that's kind of him being aware and that's that's a good sign as well because when you're a little bit shorter the tendency to just throw the ball into the defensive line that can happen but the more and more you think about it a short guy 
the ball is getting uh, tipped a lot, you would you'd kind of expect that. But I didn't see that much with him. And he's got an extensive amount of experience in college, and this kind of plays to the awareness I was just talking about. And it, it shows up on tape how much experience this guy has. He's played a lot of college football and definitely shows up for sure. And now onto the cons of uh, Talia. Just a little bit of digging here and why he's kind of lower on the list here. The ball kind of gets away from him at times, causing him to miss. Something I saw, the ball just kind of jumped out of his hand, if you will, and, and just missed the target sometimes. And he's kind of twitchy in the pocket, even when it's not needed. Kind of hit on that already. And he's not too amazing when he's rushed and has to get the ball out in a hurry, out of structure, anything like that. I mean, out of structure, I would say he was kind of good. But there were times where it's unnecessary what he's kind of doing and to get into that situation. But yeah, when he was, I think, against Michigan, that pass rush, he was not good in that game, in my opinion. That's where a lot of these kind of cons came out and, and definitely showed themselves in a, in a much more safe aspect, if you will, where I wasn't like, I'm not sure if he's overly something like, yeah, when he, when we watched the Michigan game, some of these definitely kind of came out and, and showed themselves and especially the heroic play. And he tries to make them every here and there and simply just doesn't go his way. It's it's as simple as that. He, he goes the other direction. He throws an interception, whatever it is. But yeah, looked loss against Michigan at times. The pass rush especially seemed to affect Talia. And tends to throw over the middle or throw a lot of his deep shots. Overthrow a lot of his deep th uh, shots. Jesus, can I talk? It was um something very apparent with him. The ones you see like hit for for talia the the deep shots they're good and they've got touch and they've they're relatively close like again i don't think he has like a howitzer of an arm i don't think he's like overly crazy with how good his arm is so he kind of does have to lead more than he does like rifle it in there and wait till he's 20 yards down the field to hit him 50 yards so there's that aspect of it and that could affect what he's trying to do he's trying to guide a lot more and so he ends up overthrowing a lot of those and he has so many screens on his offense it was kind of crazy i don't know if that's like the average for the uh the college quarterback but it looked and felt like a lot of screens for Talia and I think he just needs to throw it out of bounds more uh, we talk about the the heroic plays not going his way he just makes so many negative plays or so many of his negative plays when he could have avoided them like they're avoidable situations situational football I'm looking at the down and distance I'm like it's not even second down it's first down play action and he's going backwards and it's just not a good uh thing there so I guess whatever the worst things Talia does shows up when he's facing pressure avoiding pressure or any sort of pressure is applied to Talia in the pocket or just any sort of pressure anywhere so it's it's kind of understandable when you talk about this guy's poise i mean i do have it kind of high just because of the the way he handles through contact i think someone could have his feet wrapped up and he still has enough to you know get it out to his check down or something like that so i like the the calmness of his game i just didn't really like what i was seeing when he was really really like pressured and had to make the quick witted decisions and and throws they weren't really that great joe milton the next quarterback up i believe he is the number 10 so he makes the top 10 and it's one one reason and one reason only it's because of that arm, all right, if you've seen him. I mean, he's got arm talent for days, and he just needs to learn how and when it should be used, and he's not an amazing, you know, thinker upstairs. I don't think he's got everything he needs between the ears to be a, uh, a, a very good quarterback right away. I hate to kind of say it that bluntly, but that's kind of just the way it, it, it came out, I guess. But yeah, Joe Milton, I kind of have on the same tier as Talia in terms of when you come into the NFL, what your role is going to kind of look like. I think him and him and Talia right around that same area, but I think Milton could have a chance of being drafted much higher than Talia due to the arm talent. It's insane. And how much time he's had in college football and how little he has improved in the thinker way, I, I don't think uh, Joe Milton, I don't think that's a, a pro. You see a lot of these guys, I just talked about it even with Tag of Viola or Tunga Viola. The way he, the experience kind of just stands out in his game. I don't think the same goes for Milton at all. I only saw two games to tape on the 6'5", 235 quarterback uh, out of Tennessee. And we'll get into some of his pros and cons. But as you guys see with the eye score not doing so well with uh, some of the uh, the other things other than arm talent and, you know, athlete. And he's got size. And that's really what is raising his eye score a lot. Crazy arm strength. The distance is where it's best displayed. And I think that kind of showed up at the combine is uh, sometimes, uh, yeah, he'll just whip it on a slant or an out or a dig or something like that and gets it there in a, in a heartbeat. We see other people in this class do it. When it comes to distance, he can just oh, heave. 
just heave it downfield and we'll kind of talk about that later with his cons with he's just constantly throwing those but is what it is his size and athleticism the way this guy's built shouldn't be allowed and i would totally agree i think the way that uh pro okay if you had to make a quarterback in a lab it looks something like joe milton at 6'5 235 the way his arm is like this guy is insane and he is actually kind of deceivingly he doesn't use his athleticism as much as i thought he would but you could still tell he's got some of that athletic uh you know gene in him and he uses it instinctually and whatnot he can shoot passes out to the sideline on a line so just sees a guy and just throws it and it's there in a straight line and it's it's tremendous what you see with his arm and he throws a lot of lasers up and down the field but that was kind of expected he also does a good job keeping his head on a swivel while going through his progressions at least you know staying uh available or keeping himself he's not a one read merchant where he just kind of sits there all right all right and then you know you look to your second worst case scenario i don't think that he's one of those guys i think he's like one all right not there do I'll go there and then check down. Like, I think he's pretty good at keeping his uh, head, again, on a swivel. And we'll kind of get into the reasons we, we dig on Joe Milton and why he's not rated so high. I already mentioned that the heaves for days. It's just heave after heave. He's always looking for the home run. The ability to read a defense doesn't look up to par uh, at the senior bowl. That st stood out a lot. And on tape, it kind of showed itself. It wasn't as significant as it was at the senior bowl where they're playing as vanilla defenses as it gets. And he just has some inconsistent and inaccurate ball placement and accuracy overall. The further he throws downfield, like five yards good 10 yards it's like okay like you're seeing some of the inconsistencies there and the deeper you get the more you question some of the stuff i think he needs to to pump some air onto the ball and take some steam off it at times he's like we talk about these guys throwing the change up something i've used um i guess with every quarterback so far and i don't think he's i think he's one of the guys that just throws it just on a line every time just dart 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 trying to get the guys going in a straight line keep his arm just totally locked and just loaded it up and shooting it out it's it's unfortunate and i think again needs to get some air under it and uh, I think sometimes he'll leave the pocket a little bit early, putting himself in not so great situations. I think he actually had a pretty solid pocket at times, but there are other times where it just would collapse. So maybe some paranoia going on there and thinking, all right, how much time do I really have? Which is kind of good. It speeds up the internal clock. And I think a quarterback heading into the NFL should have some urgency, but you also need to be aware on when you need to leave the pocket. And sometimes he was just out of there way too early. And those are kind of just the things that stood out with me about Joe Milton. But again, I don't think he's like a Devin Leary where we're seeing the he might be undrafted. I think Milton gets drafted and hell, he might even play tight end. I don't even know at this point. Again, some things in between the ears just doesn't check out, but the arm talent's there. The uh the size is incredible. And Joe Milton doesn't seem to uh he seems to to have fun and whatnot, but I don't think he's very impressive overall as a quarterback jordan travis the next quarterback we'll get to the man with the broken leg unfortunately happened or, uh, later on in this college football season the quarterback out of fsu florida state 6 1 200 another guy lacking a little bit of that size there i have five i've watched five games on jordan travis here and i think when we talk about like quarterbacks fourth round whenever aiden o'connell was drafted i can see him getting the aiden o'connell treatment in the nfl and i like the unique skill set i'm not saying it's the same or comparing him to aiden o'connell because that'd be kind of dull i do like the the unique skill set and again i think you get the the aiden o'connell treatment where we can see him starting three games in his first year in a not so great situation starting quarterback gets hurt whatever Jordan Travis would be there, and I think he's uh, an experienced player. Now, we'll talk about him in between the ears as well. We talked about it with Milton. I don't think that he's, like, the best. You know, seeing the whole thing as a quarterback, sometimes you see the quarterbacks that just get it. I don't think Travis is one of those guys. But we'll talk about some of the things he does do well, and I think he's got plenty of quickness and acceleration inside and out side of the pocket and he, he just looks comfortable on the move he's doing it so often whether it's by design or he's just trying to make a play it, he just looks like he's he's been there done that he's good on the move he's very poised and he, he kind of still sees the field just as well as you need him to very comfortable in that offense and he's got a quick draw sort of release i was happy to see it we see uh some of these guys we talk about their arm talent i don't think travis's arm talent is you know extraordinary but i do like the way he releases the ball it's kind of like an up and out sort of deal it's not like you're winding up or anything and that's always good 
and again i think he processes pretty well uh he might be better than some of the top guys in his class at getting his eyes around the field now he might not be the best at finding that open target but he does keep his eyes very active and it allows him to kind of you know see the field and get to all of his reads at least he might not always make the right decisions but it's there and i think he shows the ability to keep his brain going during a play and getting his eyes around speaking of that and his the way his mind work i think he has a macgyver mindset when it comes to making plays out of nothing i think he's got incredibly high effort and tries his best to execute the tricky plays that we see and I think the intricate differences in between each play, I think Travis gets them all. And, you know, whether a an edge rusher comes in and gets a five yard push in right here and he's right there, he can literally like shuffle his hips and then like raise his arm up to the point where he knows the edge rusher isn't going to be there, but he can still make that little adjustment and making that or he could be getting dragged down and it's just a simple flip out or he's about to get sacked. He's in the middle of getting hit and then he knows where the check down is and like kind of just shuffles it on along and i think in terms of what i was talking about with the high effort i think he always tries to make something happen i think he has the highest motor i think as it gets for a quarterback and he's just very entertaining to watch something i stood out to me a lot was he's just entertaining i can sit here and watch five games of jordan travis and not complain or or uh you know the mind drifts off or whatever and i think when he's got the time in the pocket heals every second you give him he'll direct traffic look around and make a play he seems very much like a leader and impressive comfortable all of that the most impressive ones we saw with time in the pocket it was just shredding the seam with uh just seam balls that get right into his receiver's chest arms everywhere accessible right in the bread basket i'd say just making the throws up the seam i think he can take a snap and realistically takes five to seven extra steps back and he'd be just as comfortable that's not saying anything to the arm talent it's just saying i think he's got the ability to step back and stay again poised i think he's got extreme comfort in the uh in the offense he was in and again that's where i think the aiden o'connell treatment comes in aiden o'connell stepped in and he wasn't like amazing right away but the more he played you just saw that that control and i think the same could happen for travis with a year or two in the league uh the kid's one tough man and a great athlete and i would put this up there i don't know i, I look at athletes and bo nick stood out last year in terms and i thought uh drake may was a good athlete i don't really know everybody else was like okay but i do think he's a better athlete than even like jj mccarthy i think travis just makes stuff happen with his legs and it's not like uncanny or anything anyone hasn't ever seen but i think he's just got this quick like burst and he's got the the light feet he stays uh tough and, and kind of takes the hits and gets the tough yardage he doesn't look to avoid pressure when he's got great pocket awareness and he's at the back of his drop there's no, um, again, I think this is just a comfort thing, but you can step back and he sits there and he's aware he's got the pocket presence to do so. And I think he's a very good quarterback when he is like just standing tall in the pocket. And then if it crumbles, sometimes it just doesn't go his way, but he'll, he'll try his best to make it something. I don't think he's got a great arm, but velocity within 25 yards of the line of scrimmage looks good. I wouldn't say great, but he does it well. And he does lack a little bit of size, but with the work around the line of scrimmage, he avoids line uh, linemen's arms and bodies really well and never really gets it batted down. He's got some nice back shoulder throws. And remember, he's got some uh, lengthy receivers, though, with like the reach of Coleman and Johnny Wilson. Johnny Wilson's 6'7", and some massive wingspan. And then Keon Coleman's just a nice athlete and can get you know, his hands around and adjust really well. That's something that kind of stands out with him. But you always have to take that with a grain of salt when he's got the talented receiving room. And nothing saying that they're like better than NFL players. But if you have a Tank Dell, maybe it wouldn't be as well received. Just like throwing someone out there as an example. Some of the digs with Jordan Travis. I think he tries to do too much at times and make the heroic play, which leads to some bad decisions. And when the play comes down and it, it kind of, you know, he's squeezed in and he's like skirting out. He's doing a spin move and he's rolling uh you know right and he's got an edge rusher chasing him i think that's when some of the stuff happens and he's got poor accuracy in times like that uh rifles the ball underneath when it's not needed make it more difficult for him and his receivers uh accuracy and catching wise like the way that he does it is if he has a guy wide open and it's his check down sometimes he'll literally wind up and let it go and 
it's not great in terms of accuracy sometimes he'll throw it like down by the knees or something when he can just touch it or or at least like kind of you know you know just do the normal motion you don't need to have the extra little like point you know two seconds or whatever it can help it definitely helps but you have to understand like where your arm's at and sometimes it just messes with his accuracy and it just makes a tough catch for someone that doesn't need to like you don't need to make it any more challenging and sometimes he just has these head scratchers uh the decisions he makes time to time just something you worry about i guess he he's heroic and again it kind of comes down to the comfort and when he's uncomfortable maybe it isn't so great so something you kind of got to watch out for when he's fresh in the nfl maybe expect for him to make some of those plays definitely not a precision passer i think the the one guy that stands out to me when we talk about ball placement and i guess precision passing was jordan love down the stretch last year and as a packers fan yes there is some you know <laughs> call me favoritism blah 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 bias all that aside i think jordan love did a great job with the ball placement and putting it where the wide receiver has the best chance i don't think jordan travis is one of the i think he puts it in the vicinity and whether or not it's behind him or whatever i don't think he's got the precision passing trait to him and i think a situation uh, situational football could be a little bit better same thing we talked about with uh was it talia i think yeah talia where he wasn't you know amazing and he kind of just had those negative plays same sort of thing applies here the internal clock tends to click for too long at times and i think that stands out a lot i think uh he is confident and we talked about the comfort the whole time we've been doing this breakdown and i think that when he is yeah he's good he can sit there but again once that that cookie crumbles it's not always in the right direction and he seems to uh you know not notice it as well and the pocket presence is great but when he tends to sit there kind of drag it on a little bit it doesn't really uh work out for him all that well over the span of three games travis has three uh fumbles on either missed snaps or muffed handoffs it kind of stood out to me was his poor ball handling i think would just be the way to to put it into to like a simpler phrase like off snap sometimes like he'll just like it'll hit him flat in the hands and it'll bounce right off his hands or he'll he'll like do an rpo and decides to pull the ball out from the running back's arms late and it just ends up on the ground like there's just a few things where you look at and you think like it's avoidable and something that could be trained up maybe his mind's a little delayed or something i don't, I don't really know I don't think his arm strength is amazing in terms of distance or when he's trying to miss a 130 plus yards down the field. I think he's a very intermediate thrower. I don't think he shows a whole lot of the, um, even Devin Leary's of the world where he's floating it up and over 50, 60 yards. With Travis, there's some deeper throws, but they're they're starting off a lot earlier. That's why I said with like within the 30 plus yards, I think like right off the line, he has to look. If it's one-on-one -on -one coverage, he can take it. So. I think there is a lack in that the awareness of the lack of arm talent that he has compared to some other guys and it looks like he puts like a lot into it when he's trying to throw and step up and, and make the the big throw and he can make the throws over the middle he just doesn't do it as often and i don't think he he does it even remotely often at all and when you come down to like consistently making plays over the middle i don't think he's one of the guys in this class where you look at and you're like i project this guy to be good in the league at dicing teams up through the middle rpos uh, swing screens can really do everything i don't i don't think travis is one of those but i do like the unique skill set he offers not as a passer but as a player and and the way his mind works again we, we kind of shoot back to the macgyver mindset when it comes to making plays out of nothing it's a valuable note and i think teams would be interested in how jordan travis was uh I don't think he's like we'll get to some of the guys later but where they've got the starting traits i don't think he's one of those i think he's a very like it'd be intriguing for a team to bring in and for him to kind of just step into uh, an nfl training camp and just see how he feels and looks and you kind of you take him early you might take i mean before the leg injury people were talking third and fourth round for him and i would have been right there i'm pretty high on travis compared to consensus it feels like i would have liked to put him over these next two quarterbacks but couldn't gut my way out to do it because i don't think he shows the starting traits so Jordan Travis, though, good player. Um, again, I think the unique skill sets just stands out to me the most. Michael Pratt is the next quarterback, two-lane quarterback, comes in a more ideal size, 6'2 and a half, 217 pounds, four games on him, and I think I had two last year, two 2022 games, and then two 2023 games. And there are some things out there that I really like about this guy, and I do think, you know, the eye score is, I think, 
lower, much lower than Jordan Travis. Yeah, 112 to 100. And that kind of just comes down to what some of these guys do and don't do. And, and Michael Pratt has his flaws for sure. And we'll get to that. And a lot of it is in the pocket. But we'll talk about his 2023 tape and 2022 tape because it looked a lot different in both, um, I guess, both years for him. But 2023 first we'll talk about. And I think he had a good, you know, Good job escaping pressure, keeping his eyes up. If he doesn't like what he sees, he can take off and, and be a pretty tough runner. And he actually had a higher tendency than I expected to to take off and escape the pressure early. I think he looks like a very natural or fluid quarterback when he's got a clean pocket. He uh, actually has a surprisingly high tendency to run. And that's something I'll, I'll show you or I'll talk about here. And this is in 2023 after an energy. Uh, uh, injury and everything i've heard i wasn't expecting him to be as mobile as he was and i didn't expect him to run that often at all he's got a clean motion that helps the ball just pop out of his hand with ease it looks amazing i loved watching it on tape where the ball kind of just like just floats out of his hand it looks natural and it looks very uh like i said it just pops out of his hand with ease is the best way to say it now the cons in 2023 deep accuracy was spotty at best hung in the pocket for an extensive amount of time Poor pocket presence. Pratt will sit there until he sees something open or he just has no other option. And that's kind of the thing. I think the adjustment from college to NFL could be a tough one for him. But I think that he needs to take the risks and start trying to understand anticipation, get down the timing, and make those uh, plays, those throws in training camp if he's going to be you know, someone considered for a starting job one day, two or three years down in the future, he needs to display that he's taking those risks, that he's he's at least making an effort towards that direction of, like I said, I just it, the way that it, it looks for him, it, it just looks like he sits there until he sees it open, and that's not healthy in the NFL, and the extensive amount of time in the pocket is, is kind of crazy for me, but he always goes up the middle when trying to escape the pocket, making him, uh, you know, pretty predictable. And most of the time he just runs into a defensive lineman anyways. And that happened. And I saw that both in 2022 and 2023, the, uh, <laughs> the constant, uh, I guess the way his mind works is get through the field. If it feels like edge rushers are, are caving in on him, I'm going to try to run up the middle and little to know the A to C gap is all closed. And he just runs right into the defensive line. So not that great for him there and i think it shows a lack of uh maybe creativity wouldn't be the word i don't know why i used it though but i'm gonna use it there lack of uh, variety in run lanes for michael pratt making him again predictable and sometimes it just didn't really work out it uh, work out for him and we'll shuffle down to the 2022 tape and i've i've fallen in way the ball just can float and dart out of his hand and he could do both. That's one thing I like that we talked about the changeup earlier, right? And so the way that it kind of just like kind of floats out of his hand, but he can also make sure to send it with, um, I don't think he has a great arm, but the way he can just send it out to the sideline or anything like that, it's a good, a lot better decision making when it comes to under pressure plays in 2022 than 2023. I think his uh, plays under pressure were polished in 2022 and it seems like things regressed for him in 2023. With time, Pratt can be a killer over the middle, though his accuracy was wildly inconsistent. I'll, I'll put that on a note there. I think, yes, if he gets dealt a good offensive line, has to step in, and especially in the preseason where he's playing the second string edge rushers, I think if he's got the time, he can kill teams over the middle. Like, quite frankly, he can just straight up sit there slice and dice but his accuracy was wildly inconsistent in 2022 and i didn't see anything that was like majorly fixed in 2023 so 2022 just didn't really look that uh pretty good but he has some incredible sleight of hand play fakes where on play action you know he's put it out and then he's like taking the other arm and kind of like you know acting clueless putting the ball behind him and, and then he pulls it out and then he's he's ready to rip a rifle so that was kind of fun to watch and he, he throws with such good timing and anticipation around the line of scrimmage on the little touch passes on the swing routes and just stuff behind the line of scrimmage we were talking about him waiting to see it open it's not the same around the line of scrimmage where he's like this and maybe he feels pressure coming off the right side and that's where the running back kind of leaks out. So he's going to delay it and then he's going to just try to touch it over and put it right there. So he's got a running start into his route or into the uh, after the catch process for whoever the recipient of the pass is. And I think he uh, he throws a very good touch and flows his uh sh shows flashes of amazing ball placement and pass leading but he also lacks some velocity so kind of give and take and also take a little bit more with this i think 
there's good touch overall in his game again I, I just like the way that the ball comes out of his hand and a lot of the time it's more soft than it is like a dart like you know joe milton we talked about so i think he is kind of lacking the uh the velocity aspect of it and he also flashes amazing ball placement and pass leading outside inside anywhere it's just the lack of consistency that worries me and i think when he adds that velocity or tries to throw the the slant route over the middle the bullet pass i think he just got inconsistent bullet passes overall and i think the deep ball is a rare thing and when he does go deep it just looks like he's sending a heave and a prayer downfield he is saying amen and stepping back loading up his arm putting everything he has into it to go 50 maybe 50 yards down the field and i, I just don't think that his arm talent is amazing when it comes to all that and i'm trying i'm curious to see what yeah arm talent out of seven it's the same thing i think i had with jordan love and we'll get to a guy's uh the guys coming up obviously a lot of starting traits come from michael pratt in other ways than a starting quarterback's arm that we talk about a lot in the league where you can make all the throws so it is deep accuracy overall and then the way that he had to send the ball down the field does kind of worry me uh, it looked like he puts everything he has into a 15 yard crosser when he's trying to just add some zip limited arm <laughs> that's literally what i have in parentheses next to that no is limited arm i don't think he has something again we talked about with talia i don't think he has a howitz over an arm i don't think um mr pratt here i don't think he has the arm talia does even so uh it just things to like and and not like about michael pratt and i think the things not to like are a little bit more of the uh i think that kind of just takes majority right like obviously the things you don't like about michael pratt seem a little bit more major than the stuff to like again he needs to take the risks if he wants to end up being a uh starting quarterback in the league and that is his ceiling at best i don't think he is i think he could be more of the brock purdy mold where he's just a product of the system with a great understanding processing uh anticipation he can become one of those players two years down the road or something like that and michael pratt just shows some limits i guess with his tape that i wasn't a huge fan of thinking about it now jordan travis might have jumped him in overall quarterback rankings i just think michael pratt's the better prospect and higher ceiling if that makes any sense i think they're still in the same tier and then we'll get into our last guy in this tier with michael pratt jordan travis and spencer rattler is the final one in this tier i would you know tear in with the guys i just mentioned and he's from south carolina lacking size again another quarterback that's just six foot two eleven three games of tape and i think he's got the highs of highs i think he's he shows everything the thing I, I talk about here with the guys that we're getting into and spencer rattler might actually end up jumping a tier when all said and done with this breakdown because i think i like it more than i think or more than i know but there's a chance he could be a good nfl quarterback with times and rep or with time and reps in the league i think again just like a preseason guy might, might stand out might grow some of that confidence and whatnot but there are some things to like and a lot of stuff to not like and let's dive into both i think spencer rattler is he's got a nice throwing motion i don't think um i'm the greatest at telling whose mechanics are good and bad i haven't been doing this long and i'm not a quarterback expert with rattler it looks pretty fluid good velocity and ball placement on passes around the line of scrimmage that i need my desk right there but yeah i think um the passes around the line of scrimmage he wastes no time getting the ball out there and also has the uh the ball placement to let guys and lead guys to uh to let him go i think he can scoot up and down the pocket with his eyes up and feels the pressure off the edge quite well this kind of shows up well in his pro uh, pocket presence score for me i think he throws a good high point pass whether it's intentional or not i think he's very good with the, uh, the guys he had provided, like Xavier Leggett, and he did this at the Senior Bowl on a couple throws, where he's just throwing it a little bit higher and letting his guy go up and get it instead of, you know, taking a, a shot or whatever, putting it where it can be intercepted. He's pretty good at it just like, again, whether it's intentional or not, I can't tell, but he puts the ball relatively high. And, and uh, he's always on his toes with the lack of talent around him, especially on that offensive line. It's a good thing to at least have experience and obtain that urgency and something that he acquires as a rushed quarterback. I don't think 
that people value that enough to the point where they're like, oh, they've experienced who had a very bad, oh, Will Levis incident, right? Where Will Levis is no time in the pocket and he was actually someone that has dealt with that. And it's why we saw some glimpses out of him. It didn't seem to affect him all that well. I think he's at least got experience doing that and it looks like he's always on his toes. And again, he obtains that urgency that you might need. And despite the combine testing, Rattler shows the ability to be like a five yard runner with short area quickness and speed. I think within, again, five yards, he's a pretty explosive athlete to me. And that's why his athlete is at, or that's why his athletic uh, eye score thing there is just a tick above 10 is because I did not mind his ability to run the football when needed for an extra three or four yards and relatively made it look like he had some of that speed and gets out and makes a juke or something and i think he also shows flashes of confidence placement timing and velocity throwing over the middle of the field it just it looks good and again there's confidence there's placement timing velocity power all that stuff but it's only flashes how consistent did he do it well it wasn't that that <laughs> great and he made some very questionable decisions but at least he shows the ability to do that and we'll talk about like starting traits and he's someone with like arm talent and the pocket presence the athletic upside there's a tiny bit and it was better than his combine testing and the ability to at least show the fact that he might be able to throw over the middle and he uses good touch and good velocity he seems to have a good feel for when he needs to use either of uh, the touch or velocity he throws the change up well something i think we'll just kind of you know hit on these guys with and he's uh again a surprising athlete when it comes to his elusiveness and quickness through the second level i think he misses guy or i think he makes guys miss often more often than you think like 100 percent again the surprising factor when it came to him and his combine testing and then you go watch him and it's like okay like this guy he doesn't look bad i'm not going to say he's a he's a terrible athlete because he ran like what a 495 or something very bad 40 time i'm not just gonna you know count that out i think he still has uh the surprising elusive ability and getting through the second level with power and making guys miss kind of already hit on this but the questionable decisions and he'll be playing well right he might be in rhythm and then he'll just throw some brain dead passes just kind of the way it works with spencer rattler i guess and something i haven't seen often in this class when guys are in rhythm it looks like they're gonna fire and they're gonna take the easy throw when they don't have their first or second read or they might take it up the middle or they might just throw it away and when spencer rattler is in rhythm there's always still a question of will he make the boneheaded decision here and sometimes it was the case and it was whatever and he kind of is flaily in the pocket he lacks some size sometimes and just gets knocked over by one arm on a defensive lineman that gets on him like something he'll reach around the tackle and then like tug on his shoulder pad and he'll go down to that i think he's pretty flaily in the pocket and kind of brittle if you will not that that durable or tough guy mentality stands tall in the pocket i think he can throw guys in his face pretty easily i just think he kind of gets knocked over uh pretty easily as well but he isn't real accurate when he's getting rushed and that's something that we kind of see with a lot of these guys that are down here and we'll talk about some guys that are good at just throwing with pressure in their face but he can get the ball out it's just he just rarely executes and makes the the complete ball when he's got a defender in his face if he's if he's got an all-out blitz someone comes straight up the the a or b gap it's a linebacker and he looks at him and he's like oh crap <laughs> and he's about to receive the hit and field the contact he's gonna like look away and throw it and very rarely does he complete those passes but when he does i mean like yeah, again he shows the ability to do that and he's uh he's very quick to roll out there's times when he just scrambles instead of climbing the pocket or just setting in or, or just sitting and setting himself up in a uh settling with a clean pocket the way that uh i was talking about with michael pratt and jordan travis the comfort i don't think there was any for spencer rattler and i don't think uh it happens often but He's got a case of the Bonex heavy feet everywhere, uh, every here and there, I should say. I think he's a guy that sits there, and yes, you could say like he's he's been very polished or whatever. He's been he's been very groomed to be a very good quarterback or whatever. I think through the course of his high praisal career through college, I think there are still times where his feet drop dead, and I think he worked on that and it showed up better at the Senior Bowl and Combine and 
Another guy with uh, just two reads and a third if you count running. Most of the time he'll uh, go only go from his primary read to his check down. And that is something I saw with the lack of time as well. That kind of factors into there where he snaps a ball, looks one read, and then just dumps it down so it is what it is and with rattler the throws downfield are always deep crossers deep posts or fade routes which he's having to account for the diagonal timing too and he's obviously not good at reading the deep secondary with how many bad decisions and interceptions i saw in that field but i think he could benefit a lot from just throwing the average go route where the guy is mostly just for the most part he's just running downfield in a straight line and he's more worried about the touch and the distance he needs to throw instead of him calculating diagonal safety there maybe he can get there depth of target like you're looking at that sort of thing and I, I just wouldn't make it hard for him if you're an nfl coaching staff i think spencer rattler needs to simplify some things early i don't think he's going to be the one to throw the deep posts fades uh deep crossers i think that's where he struggles the most downfield i didn't see it often but when he did throw the the vertical straight line route it looked it looked better than when he was trying to throw it with a diagonal angle in there as well and that kind of wraps it up for spencer rattler and we'll move to our next tier if you will i don't know what ranking we're getting on to but i think rattler's like my seven or eight quarterback michael Penix jr coming in at quarterback six and yes spencer rattler was number seven so michael Penix jr washington quarterback measured in at 6'2 216 i have eight games of tape on mr Penix, and i think Penix shows some good and bad in those eight games there and it depends on what you like in a quarterback and how you weigh his pros and cons let's hop right into it and i think he's okay we'll start off with this look at the like all the way down the only thing under a 10 is his athletic score something that stands out to me right away when i'm looking across these bars and comparing it to the guys below I think that this just makes um you know it stand out i guess a little bit more but penix jr number six for a reason let's get into why i think he's got a quick jab sort of uh you know throwing tendency like to the point where it's fine on the quick and shallow routes where you snap boom like that's just a jab if you guys watch boxing you know a jab just like a a simple bop it's not the greatest form by me i'm not a boxer don't watch boxing don't critique me or anything but i know what a jab is and i think i'd call that what what Penix does sometimes where he just snaps a ball and it's a quick jab throw it's just the way it works he's got the good timing with his throws over the middle he's quick to find a receiver adjust and throw that process is great for him snap he's got time he's not really worried about anything and he looks at roma dunze and throws to roma dunze very clean cut easy as that he can del deliver an accurate throw while shuffling up and down the pocket or just in the pocket in general left to right doesn't matter with his live arm he can throw some heaters all over the field just some like he's got a rifle for an arm i think that's just like pretty official where he can just boom and it's there it's there it's gonna be there it's always gonna be there he's like again live arm there arm angles for days but mostly uh, mostly the typical sidearm when he goes to an alternate throwing um I guess arm angle right it's mostly just the sidearm that he shows and displays and he's got no sort of shortage shortage of urgency or velocity when targeting outside the numbers with a quick draw and release this guy is pretty like pretty set on going snapping looking outside and then just it's on a rope it's just there all right it's just it just magically appears it teleports the ball moves at such a rate it cannot be comprehended by the human eyes and he throws a very nice back shoulder ball and then we'll get to the last thing and the most important thing in this whole pros list for michael Penix jr the texas game for michael Penix jr was cj stroud's georgia game if that's what we got in the nfl he'd be my quarterback too on this list i think michael Penix jr if we saw the texas game or if what we saw if we saw what we saw in the texas game through the whole season and michael Penix was jr was that player all year he'd have serious consideration to be my quarterback too and i wouldn't think twice all right again i think this is the cj stroud georgia game where if we got this in the nfl it's good all right it's good and i think michael Penix jr put himself in a good spot and then i, don't, I wouldn't say he choked but he had a rough game in the the championship game against michigan so we'll uh, get on to some of the the cons where that was um exploited maybe against michigan where his overall ball placement wasn't quite there and needs to work on the touch throws we talk about the changeup. we've talked about it for every guy till till now and now we're even including it to michael Penix 
where he needs to maybe switch up and put some air under it. Maybe he needs to maybe just like slightly slow it down a little bit. And another thing that stood out with him is he literally has all day when he's got that pocket like dial, right? When they when they have their guys, that is a very good pocket from Penix to throw out of. He doesn't have an answer when pressure closes in and he doesn't evade pressure like other quarterbacks in this class can. Like he's not even capable of it. In my opinion, from what I saw until the Texas game, that's the outlier. And that's the one I'm going to shuffle towards when we're talking about like what Michael Penix could, Jr. could be. And it is a shame he is quarterback six because I do like the player. I do think he'd be great. And again, if we see Texas Michael Penix Jr. in the NFL, he's be a lot higher on my, my board here. But he, um, he missed some throws and struggled against pressure uh, pressure in general against Michigan in the college football uh, championship. Gets very skittish and maybe even panics a little when there's pressure. He legitimately looks scared to get hit sometimes where the process is so rushed for him when he has a free rusher off the edge or a blitzing linebacker where I see at times, and this is very vivid in my mind, where he will throw it and then like duck his shoulder. So he's like rushing it out and then like shielding the hit almost. And that is like, it's not terrible. And it's not like it's not quarterback 101 to protect yourself. It's just a little concerning, I guess. But he's had a long injury history and it's understandable. And I get it. All right, I get it all. But a lot more of his throws hit the ground than I'd expect from what you hear about his precision best pocket passer in the the uh class so much work around the line of scrimmage that doesn't get talked about like it does for Knicks. i think he's another guy that just throws a lot around the line of scrimmage and again i don't think it got brought up nearly as much as we did for Knicks. there's reason obviously i think Knicks did it at a an alarming rate while michael Penix did it at, a, at an increasing rate it wasn't like something that was totally um bone nicks ish it was just a lot of work around the line of scrimmage for michael Penix jr and again my quarterback six and has the ability to be much higher and if i were to take the texas game and only the texas game he would be quite higher than number six on this list and i have to check here are we moving to the same tier yes i do have michael Penix jr and jj mccarthy on the same list and jj mccarthy has the prototypical size at six to one and a half inches tall that is the exact average in the league by the way at 219 pounds which is the exact average in the league you take all the quarterbacks in the nfl to a certain extent i can't remember if it's just starters or first and second stringers but i went on a website and i looked this all up to, to for the uh, size criteria of the i score evaluation and six two and a half 219 is literally the average in the league both areas weight and size and i watched 12 games of jj mccarthy to get this overall uh you know a bit of <laughs> it's still a short list because he didn't throw as much but i think mccarthy is the classic stash away quarterback to keep behind a, a veteran for a year or two and you'll see the eye score is not great for him and we'll get to the reasons why i think we'll actually start with the negatives for jj mccarthy so we can hype him up at the end because there are things i love about jj mccarthy for sure but we'll start with the nine inch hands with weather, weather conditions and his grip in general could be a little bit of a concern i know teams kind of value that i probably wouldn't personally then we'll talk about the Bowling Green game with the three interceptions. For the first one, he just straight up didn't see a defender. In the second one, he threw a 90-10 ball to the DB. Normally, you hear a 50-50 ball where you're giving just a jump ball. No, he, he threw this one in the DB's favor, 90-10 to to his wide receiver. And then the other one, he's just trying to do too much and, and play some hero ball. So obviously, some inconsistencies there. Something's not ticking right in the, the head in, against Bowling Green, I guess. And obviously, they still won that game. I think he needs to add some touch in, in his game. I think he just needs to add it. Same thing as Michael Penix Jr. We talked about his timing with some of the throws over the middle were just straight up inconsistent. And he takes some sack when there's enough more than enough opportunity to just avoid them and we talked about Italia, and he just scoots 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 and then oh he's like i can do it i can do it i can make it around the corner and then he gets sacked and it's like dude just throw it away you saw the edge rusher i wouldn't be scared to just make the smarter decision and throw it away and now he does have good decision making at time he's got good timing he's got the anticipation there are times where you're just thinking like there's a way to avoid that and it's it, you had more than enough opportunity to avoid that and that just kind of brings this back up as well where he might lag a little bit while getting through his progressions and when i say that it's not like like okay you ever play a video game and your game just lags like where it's just sitting there, you're bad or whatever. And it kind of just glitches and stops. I think that's the way his it works for JJ. He'll be like, oh, oh but I want to watch Roman Wilson, but Cornelius Johnson's my second read. 
should get to him about now, but I'm going to stick on Roman Wilson because I think a, a safety went the other way. Like, there's just some things I, I saw and it's not quite to that same extent. All right, don't get me. I'm not trying to be the quarterback. I'm not saying I'm as stingy as that. I'm just saying there are times where he could afford to speed up that process and sometimes he just falls behind. And that just seems like most of the time actually with the game. Sometimes his brain is just an inch behind the play and, and little things get exposed from time to time. And it's... It's so slightly, but watching 12 games of J.J. McCarthy, you kind of get a grasp on what his process looks like and stuff like that, obviously, right? So with McCarthy, it looks like he's just a tick slow sometimes, and you can't really have that, and it gets exposed, and it did. Sometimes when he rushes his throwing motion, and when especially pressure comes in faster than he's expecting, he leads, it just leads to poor accuracy and timing. You know, a guy in your face, and you have to get it out. I was talking about it with Michael Penix Jr., where he legitimately looks scared. Not the same thing here for J.J. McCarthy, but same circumstances. When there's a free rusher or someone off the edge that absolutely cooked your tackle, you're going to like try to you know speed up your process, get your arm up and go when you weren't expecting to. And he's not that great in those situations. And you know we see quarterbacks in this class that are. And it just kind of stood out to me, I guess, that he wasn't as great doing that. And now, don't get me wrong, I still do like J.J. McCarthy a lot. And we started with the cons, so we can hype him up here. This kid is arm talents for days. All right, JJ can throw it on a straight line for 30 yards down the field with no loft and no air. It is a straight line, 30 yards down the field. He put some real speed on the ball when throwing outside the numbers. Huge plus in a pro-style offense. The process while rolling and scrambling right towards the right seems very routine and easy for McCarthy. Someone we talked about doing the same thing was Jordan Travis. When he's rolling, there's just a sense of like, you're confident in this. Like with um Patrick Mahomes, not saying JJ's Patrick Mahomes. When he's rolling, you're not concerned. And then Aaron Rodgers, I go back as a Packers fan, and when you see Aaron Rodgers drift out right and just and like just launch one, I had full confidence. There was nothing wrong. And it was the same sort of thing with McCarthy. There just seemed to be this like this sure thing with him when he's rolling out. And it, whatever. But and not only that, he stands in the pocket for as long as he can. And sometimes he'll take the bad sack instead of, you know, avoiding and uh, I guess cutting his losses. Sometimes he just, you know, stands back there and gets hit. But when he doesn't, I mean, it's until he is fully pushed out of the pocket. He doesn't stay in the pocket. So he stands in the pocket for as long as he can. He's not scared to throw in some very tight windows and had some very nice tight window throws. He's got very active feet in the pocket, always shuffling and ready to throw. Prototypical way it's quarterbacks taught. And with uh, with the time, with time to, oh wait, no, I, mean, I skipped one. Sorry, this is an important one. Second in this class, to only Bo Nix when it comes to throwing the seam ball. JJ's got it. <laughs> He's got it. I think with the seam, Jordan Travis, Bo Nix, and JJ McCarthy are my seam throwers in this in this class. And I think it's used a lot in the league where you're just boom. And it's up the seam. It's right there. And again, I'll use in the bread basket. And JJ McCarthy, second to only Bo Nix when it comes to, to that sort of deal there and with time he he gets through his progressions just fine nothing crazy it's the rush throws and pressure that might interfere with his process already kind of hit on that and the bounce back ability jj has is incredible he can go one play he's a he's negative five yards on a sack and the next play he'll throw a 20 yard dot the bounce back ability is there for jj and he, he displays it time after time he can go five plays without throwing a football and just giving handoffs 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 and you think it's easy to just come back and throw a football and your arm's cold or whatever his arm doesn't get cold when he has to convert on a, on a clutch third down he can do it. He's your guy. He's got ice in his veins. The average height of the quarterbacks is exactly what McCarthy weighed in at. What his measurables are are the exact average weight and height of the quarterback in the league. That's another thing that stood out with me. I know I already hit on that and told you guys about that little fun stat there. Something fun to watch, and I'm I'm not much of a numbers guy, so whenever I can fit one in, I'm going to try to get it twice. Drake May next up on this list and in the next tier above those guys. So we've got Drake May, number four on the rankings list. The University of North Carolina, 6'4", 223 pounds. Watched nine games of him. Uh, the talk about Drake May has only been coming out recently, and I've had this done from before everyone was really down on him. And let me say I'm highly, highly happy, and I'll tell you guys why. I said, and I quote, more of the Jordan Love mold. 
comma. He's a traitsy quarterback, and you'll need to develop the traits and hope for a top 10 quarterback. I don't think he needs to sit for three years, but yeah, there, there are some youngness in his game. And I'll tell you guys why that was so like important to me, because before all this hype kind of came out about Drake May and and how bad and how he needs to sit for a little bit before he was the unquestioned like second overall pick, how he even could be the number one. Like that watching back and reflecting on the tape, it was a lot of like, how is that the case? Like, I don't see that. So I'm going to be honest and we'll see where like consensus ends up by the time this video comes out. But this is one of my first rankings. I think he's the second quarterback I watched. And it was a lot of like what people are saying now. So I'm really like happy for myself as an evaluator of like not guessing correctly but and ultimately ending up where some of the better draft analysts ended up i'm really happy with myself there but we'll get into the pros and the cons here i think it just throws lasers all over the field arm talents through the roof solid runner and surprisingly elusive for a guy of his stature the ball just looks natural popping out of his hand kind of saw the same thing with michael pratt but there's just like something more with may obviously the arm talent looks a little bit uh better there ball placement on the shorter throws and slants out routes everything kind of within the five yards whatever is great may has got some serious touch and accuracy on the throws he makes while he's on the roll not sprinting or scrambling or anything like that where he's like trucking trying to get away from a from an edge defender and kind of just like lofts it no it's more like a roll 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 less like urgent and just like lofts it up and it lands perfectly it, it just shows some good um some good uh, ability there confident thrower against crowded zones in coverage safety over top a linebacker underneath and a corner on the left or right of his receiver he's not scared to throw it in there in a crowded um area if you will he finds the hole in triple coverage he'll throw it throws the curl slash dig route so well he can put it wherever it needs to be and lead his receivers to more open spaces and away from contact i think that was something that kind of just stood out to me time after time with some of the the comeback routes the dig routes the curl routes was the guy would be coming out of his cut and then drake may would throw it deeper towards the line of scrimmage to get him away from the the chaser or the tackler who was right there I think that was pretty good and along with the good pocket awareness the ability to step back up if someone off the edge gets an arm in or a pressure in general if he feels the presence coming in from the side he's not afraid to step back up but not only that he's good at feeling just all the way around i think he's got good arm angles when he needs them but the ability to split the line ahead of him and avoid everyone is very impressive now he did have some batted balls and i wasn't happy with it there are the um the throws where like he'll throw it you know how like sometimes you'll hear things like zip or like when you you do this like a whip or something it goes like what pow and like you hear it do the whole like that's probably how it feels for some offense and defensive linemen he goes against because he'll like just throw it and split like their heads or whatever so say someone say this is someone's head and then say i'm the the offensive lineman head say this is a defensive lineman head he'll throw it right through the middle and it looks super good with great <laughs> great ability to just be able to split the uh the area there if you will may can also generate some serious velocity from any platform hence arm talent that's kind of what the whole thing is he's got very active feet and there's constant constant moving movement and bounce with his feet you know he's always like evaluating you know sitting there you're back in the pocket he never really slows down and gets the heavy feet that we've talked about he's so good in rhythm when completing uh so good in rhythm completion after completion may looks a lot more comfortable and poised when he's in the zone right like i think we talk about rhythm a lot for quarterbacks so i was talking about it earlier with spencer rattler where when you're in rhythm and then you have that bonehead mistake like a lot of the quarterbacks in this class like drake may when you're in rhythm it's just hit after hit completion getting through your progressions like just things look good for him and there are plays where he can make all the reads and at least show flashes of processing at a higher level than i believe he showed through the whole season i don't think he was great at all when it comes to processing i think we'll dig a little bit further into drake may now uh we just talked about with the ability to process but we'll talk about the ins inconsistent total accuracy he puts the ball in harm's way trying to play a little bit of the hero ball when we talk about hero ball it's kind of just making again the heroic play patrick mahomes-esque where he's rolling out of the pocket he's falling down it's a sidearm crossbody all that good stuff sometimes you'll try that and just kind of uh put the ball in harm's way predictable in terms of runway he'll always just shoot up through the middle of the field he struggles to make throws while adjusting to pressure i i mentioned he can make the throws off any platform earlier but that's when he's set like if he's like kind of drifting back sure 
but when there's pressure and a guy's like getting into his chest or whatever he, he kind of struggles to have the ability to make the the accurate throws and just throws in general maybe ends up in a sack the ball gets away from him on sit down targets and off platform throws he has a few horrible picks where you can see where he wants to throw doesn't execute at all and ends up in a defender's hands that one had me kind of scratching my head every here and there the mobility in the pocket is there but there's no explosion or quickness with his movements inside or out of the pocket with enough time i trust he can make the right read but i struggle with his initial processing like obviously the first two drives you have a good idea what you're doing and then after that it just doesn't look that great you know second half when you're trying to get through your process and you know go, go through your progressions and reads he wasn't that great at it he has so many plays where he just locks into his first and second read or okay first read for two seconds then panics and either tosses it away or to his deepest receivers that is a true story by the way I watched him about do this like 20 times where he snapped the ball he's looking at one for that long right he's going like snap look 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 and then he realizes like all right time's almost up i'm sure <laughs> steps back and just throws it to the deepest receiver he has on the field in a one-on-one -on -one situation or just throws it away he has more swatted passes than you'd like especially for you know especially at his size you would like to see him be a little bit better like i said he has the ability to split the the line to split the hairs and and just put it in areas where defensive linemen can't touch it but there are also some where it's just straight up swatted and you're like okay dude you're six four and i watched talia to Taga viola do a better job <laughs> not getting the swats or whatever when uh he's significantly shorter so may needs to do a little bit better at just a little bit of everything and again i think he's more of the jordan love mold maybe doesn't need to sit for as long traitsy quarterback develop the traits and and look and try to develop the the end product i guess the best you can may still has a lot that he's good at right now and i think shows flashes of being an elite quarterback prospect but there are just some things i worry about and that kind of outweighs some of the guys above him Jaden daniels a spot above drake may but still in the same tier the lsu quarterback that comes in with impressive size at 6'4 but not great weight at 210 another guy I watched eight games for i like daniels because he he kind of profiles like a high ceiling player but he actually has a pretty solid floor and what looks like an over romanticized or overrated arm to me personally i don't think that his arm is crazy like people have made it out to be in the past and you'll see there with the eye score that takes a little bit of a dent but he has the third highest arm uh or not arm talent score but he has the first or the third highest all around i score in this quarterback class and there's a reason for it. and he's actually ending up third on my quarterback rankings we'll see and we'll talk about why and who finishes above him daniels and some of the good is great and um despite being lethal in the run game daniels doesn't appear eager or quick to bail out and run on a play if he's sitting there he doesn't look like he's uh I, I think anthony richardson did a good job of this last year as well where he takes the snap and he knows he has good you know legs he's good on his feet and you can kind of you know like eh, i don't like that i'm gonna hesitate i'm gonna keep reading the field instead of you know i don't like the first read i'm gonna see a run lane or i'm gonna look for a run lane see it and run it's not that way he's willing to check down if his legs aren't there if he feels pretty close in the pocket i don't think he'd be scared at all to just dump it off he just got the good decision making on the rpos uh options and etc just kind of those those plays where he has to make the initial like call on who gets the ball on the rpos like run pass option where you snap the ball and you can either hand it off or find the receiver take it out of your running back's hand and throw it the deep ball can have some elite touch at times uh despite some inconsistencies there i think he throws it with um a good ability to just drop it up in from a skyscraper it's it looks good and it's pretty deep but again I, we'll talk about the arm talent but he has the touch and ability to make layered throws over the deeper intermediate areas of the field. And that's huge because he probably did that better in this class than others, for sure. He has the touch and ability to make a layered throws over the deeper inner. I just read that one. Can the 10 throws the 10 yard in slash curl route with great timing and placement? I think May did a good job of like seeing it and then throwing it. I think Daniels did a better job before they made the cut predicting where the guys are going to be and then get it over a linebacker instead of leading he's more of a timing sort of um you know still you know hit your mark type of guy like where a guy goes 10 yards out and turn i think daniels does a good job like okay he's about to get to eight yards now by the time it gets to him he'll be 10 yards and in and that's kind of the, the best way to explain that i guess but he can give his guys a chance downfield or one or two games where he might want or there are one or two a, a game 
one or two throws a game. He might want back though. I, why did I phrase it that way? I'm, whatever. The best fade route thrower I've seen in this class easily it's not even close he throws the fade with such good touch timing accuracy right in the bread basket we talked about it and it's right there pocket mobility is obviously good but he senses pressure and he's gone so quick i thought it was still worth mentioning the uh the quickness and the adjustment to pressure is amazing and the anticipation and timing shows up uh, on tape more than other quarterbacks in this class. I don't think he's necessarily, uh, we talked about it with Michael Pratt, where he waits all day, sees it open, throws it. It's more of a <laughs> gets the ball, has all day, kind of knows where his guys are meant to be. I guess hit your mark sort of thrower as well, where you're you know, counting on your, your guys to get there as well. And we'll look at some of the negatives here. He takes a lot of nasty hits. That's very well known. And he literally has all day to throw. Time to throw is an issue for me. For him, Daniels will stick to his first read for longer than he should because he's got some of that and, and he puts a hitch in his po uh, progressions almost set hut <laughs> get the ball and then he has the comfort and ability to sit in the pocket and stare down his second read or stare down his first read and then adjust to his second after he's been watching his first for too long daniels's arm has been overhyped at this point there's a lot of touch and he puts up a, a lot of deep balls but he he lacks velocity as a whole like the velocity part of his game isn't really there where he's just going like whip and then he's throwing a nice change up and tossing it over a linebacker which a whip whip and then he's like okay well there's a safety there whatever it's not like that a lot of it is just pure touch and i don't i don't think that a lot of people are, are tending to get to that people are over romanticizing the the arm of jane daniels and he likes the home runs a lot a lot a lot <laughs> there was just a times where he has a wide open check down or brian thomas no one's covering him but he's like dude malik neighbors is is one-on-one -on -one with a safety on a deep post i'm gonna throw it <laughs> it's kind of the way i think he might look at it sometimes there's there's times where he does take the check down and and makes the smarter decision when he doesn't have someone over top but when he has someone over top he he definitely looks that way and i, I don't think he'd have any regrets throwing it the amount of times he got sacked by the opposing idl interior defensive line kind of surprises me a little bit because of how quick he is and then there's some 315 pound man that just gets up to him and puts him on the ground it's pretty simple and it again kind of surprised me he's got a sped up process between getting his eyes around and uh and readying his arm he can be very inconsistent with overall accuracy when he has to you know okay so say you snap to your second read so snap first read second read throw because you have to because that's your process or or first read check down because you have a guy right in your face and he's throwing it and it's never really there or great inconsistent all the way around the ball placement is inconsistent at times when it comes to his second and third reads kind of just goes back to the other one when he's fresh on a new read when he finally lands his eyes on the read he's gonna throw if it's a little bit rushed or even like a little bit of the you know snap look throw that doesn't look so great and it looks like he might need a little bit more time to improve on that uh you know ball placement accuracy timing all that good stuff and the last thing we'll talk about here with the cons list he gets a little bouncy and pitter patter in his feet when pressure's caving in so when he's got you know when he's closing in he doesn't want to throw it away there's a lot of the uh, uh, and kind of like he kind of freaks out with his legs almost and it shows a lot and i talk about the pitter patter it's like pitter patter, pitter patter you know what i'm talking about you know what i'm talking about i know it's a really white phrase but listen all right you know what I, i'm just gonna make the observations and you guys can interpret them how you want but pitter patter was the way i decided to go about uh, evaluating Jaden daniels's feet bo nix is the last quarterback i have in this tier wrapped up with Jaden daniels and drake may and if you guys couldn't tell i'm extremely high on bo nix and i'll say this first off i like sure things i'm not a betting man i don't like to look at traits and say what he could be i like the player now and bo nix is so clean as a prospect i think that's like truly the best way to sum it up he is clean nix has a better arm and more upside than he even gets credit for but he's very clean as of right now now and i love what he can be and his arm talent is a thing as well i think he's got a very similar arm to like devin leary when we talk about it maybe even slightly better when you look at bo nix he's just so clean and again I, I think that's truly the best way to say it 
for Bo Nix, sitting at six foot two, two fourteen, just a, a little bit off the prototypical size in nine games of tape I've watched on Bo Nix. I only needed to watch three. I, I love this guy. I don't I don't know why. It just it just happened. He always has a solution. There's there's no getting Nix on the ground. He evades pressure with ease and can answer with the right guys. Wait, with guys right in his face or on the run. He just responds to pressure so incredibly well, and that's why the poise, he has the, the highest poise score, probably by a margin. I don't think I gave anyone like a 19, maybe Caleb Williams. I can't even remember that, though. Uh, yes, I just spoiled my number one. Oh, boo-hoo. Everyone has Caleb Williams number one, all right? Don't get disappointed, but... Yeah, the poise is amazing from him, no matter what is going on around him. Chaos, anything, he's there. He has it, like, just on, on the speed dial, I would say. He can click through his reads quickly, even when he's still in his drop, and he can get through the first two reads. So, you snap the ball, and most quarterbacks shuffle back two to three steps, and then step, step back there, like, three to four steps, whatever. But you see those guys kind of get back into their drop, right? So, with Bo Nix, while he's dropping back, he can still keep his head on a swivel, make the first two reads. If he doesn't like them, he's there for the check down or he can use his leg and kind of set up the rest of the play according to how he sees the play really early he plays patient football and never gets sick of the easy throws underneath and that's huge you can really bore a team to death when you're sitting there going okay we're taking the five yards three yards four yards that you can yeah that's so annoying i can imagine and the internal clock is really good most college quarterbacks like i hate to say it but in this class there's some that just don't really understand it in my opinion, I don't I don't see a guy as good as Nick's when it comes to just getting the ball out on time. He can use his speed and rely on his legs when he has to. Like it's there, it's an option. I wouldn't say he's uh necessarily a you know as eager as Michael Pratt. I know I keep shuffling back to Pratt for some reason, but yeah, Pratt comes back, I guess, quite a bit. Maybe I would have Pratt over Travis, who knows? I don't know. Listen, this is about prospect evaluations. We're up to number two and we're saying Michael Pratt's name. Let's get out of here. Uh, <laughs> he could use his legs and rely on that when he has to. I don't question the deep ball at all. A lot of people are saying he can't throw it. I love the deep ball for Knicks. It is inconsistent at times and we'll, we'll talk about some missed deep passes for him, but they are relatively like good throws all the way around. He's good on the move. He can be rolling or scrambling, and Nick can keep his eyes up, continue through his reads with that poise process I'm talking about. Uh, he can work the seam better than any other quarterback in this draft with his timing, touch, accuracy, and velocity. The way that he can just throw a seam is insane and monitor how the middle of the field kind of turns out. It just shows way more than any other quarterback. I have no questions about his arm talent. People seem to have the the questions or questioning it in his arm and saying it's it's only adequate it's there it's a thing i think he's got a slightly better than adequate arm matter of fact i think he has a very good arm like i said i think devin leary type i think they actually have the same arm talent score for me where it's just he can rifle it like he can it's there it's not to the point where we're looking at joe milton launch at 80 70 yards down the field whatever it is again it's just a very fluid processor and and throwing process in general and throws around the line of scrimmage where he he snaps he looks and he can throw some power or get it on outside whatever it is if he needs to you know he snaps maybe guides the safety some way or whatever he needs to do to keep his eyes up while the play does, develops or he gets a guy on a little bubble and he just like looks and just rifles it out and where we saw i think that's where who was it, it was either drake may it was Jaden daniels that struggled to do that and be so quick-witted i think bo nix that was more than natural for him to do that and i think um some that shows up is moving up and down the pocket so well he, he keeps his eyes up and his brain thinking he's constantly getting an alternate option flowing in his head or an idea of what can happen so he's snapping the ball he's moving and he's getting up and down and he's getting left and right in the pocket and he's always just thinking about what's there and what to take and where to go if this isn't there like you can tell his brain moves really well in terms of football the ball placement is great on 75 percent of his intermediate throws over the middle which is big in the nfl where you need to where you need to like lead your receivers now i say 75 percent of the time because i'd say about one every four times you'd see nick kind of put it behind him or it would be a little over top or maybe a little bit low but most of the time it's very clean and it's just there in the arms He's got plenty of passes that are five plus yarders outside the numbers right there. Good velocity. Something that leads to like good arm talent and anticipation where you snap the ball. And again, you keep your eyes up to guide the safety or whatever, and then snap throw. And it's right there before the guy even makes the cut. It's so fun to watch. 
very fluid quarterback. Bo Nix, reasons he's my number two. The list can go on uh, further, but I think those are like the important points, I guess. And we'll get to some of the cons and where I could see some people might, you know, doubt his ability. But I, I think a lot of work around the line of scrimmage, and I mean a lot. And and his receivers, yak numbers also boost his numbers a little bit. That could be used, but so what? He was asked to execute an offense and he did it. Oh, boo hoo. I don't care. I, Bo Nix did what he was asked and that's good. He did what the offense required him to do. The missed deep passes are pretty close for the most part, but just shows a lack of consistently or consistency uh, throwing downfield. And that's just pretty much what I said in the first go around. I have no questions about him getting the ball downfield. It's just whether or not that consistency shows up throwing downfield. And like I said, most of the deep passes are pretty close. Like they're they're within three yards of the receiver. It's just kind of polishing that up, I guess. Rolls right constantly. It looks like it's the play design, but it might be a, it might form a habit. Like if he snapped and then the tackles like pushing in, like you'd have to assume they expect him to roll right, kind of work his way out of the pocket that way. But again, it might just form a bad habit and whatnot. And we'll talk about bad habits and deeper drops when he has the time in the pocket. He has these heavy feet where uh, where there's simply a lack of mo movement with his feet. It's simply that it just doesn't move his feet. And it's heavy feet. I think anticipation and timing need a little bit more practice, but he at least shows flashes and he has the ability to throw with anticipation and timing. Uh, the throws the seam with so much power and velocity, yet he has a lot of air under the ball and more touch when it's on a go route. I, I would like to see him throw the go route with, you know, precision, right? And whether that's touch or velocity, cool. But a lot of the times on the go routes for him, it's just, it's lofting it. It's letting the air get under the ball, letting it rainbow kind of into his, his arm. Other than like just rifling it, you know, into a good position for the receiver. I think that he could polish the deep ball up a little bit more. I think that's just like the thing that kind of pops out with Bo Nix is the polish on the deep throw. Again, clean as it gets. I love Bo Nix. It's just as simple as that. Chef's kiss, Bo Nix. Everyone knows and loves Caleb Williams, and I'm not far off. The USC quarterback officially came in in his pro day. Like, I think I saw like 6'1", 214 or whatever. 10 games of tape I've watched on him. The clear cut number one, and it's very apparent on tape. He shows everything you've ever wanted in a franchise quarterback. And I don't doubt saying that, but then you look at everything and all things considered, the elite arm talent, the arm angles, he gives him freedom to do some crazy things that we saw him do the great pocket mobility and acceleration to get away in a hurry when he has time and stands true in the pocket i don't think there's any struggle to get through his reads at all people kind of dug at his time to throw the process standing in a pocket like in structure play i don't think he i think he's dismissed those questions as the season went on he can get the ball out quick and easy even with defenders blocking his initial angles kind of like ropes back to the whole sidearm sorry buddy you're not blocking that sort of throws that he does and the crazy uh things he can do uh displays touch when it's needed also shows velocity and arm strength when it's needed he's an all-around like good like he can just like lob it out on a touch pass and then the next play he come back throw a five yard slant with the more heat than uh you'll see in the middle of summer in california i guess i don't know that was that was dumb. Yeah, he's so poised and reliable when climbing the pocket with no defender behind him. The the amount of struggle he has with timing and rhythm is none. No no struggle with timing and rhythm on the shorter dig and curl routes and just the shorter routes in general. There's no like hitch like we've talked about with other guys that like to see it open or they might question what they're seeing with him it just goes out of his hand it, sorry like not holding on is like a hot potato and he, and he hits it with timing and, and when he's in rhythm that's such a, a good uh throw for him he's amazing at extending plays in every way imaginable pretty simply he can rip a seam ball so easily with touch or some real speed he takes the easy pass when it's there uh, he has the presence of mind to make defenses think he's going to do one thing while he's thinking about doing something else. I saw this against Washington mostly where he'd be rolling out left and he'd be like looking, looking downfield. He even like pump fakes, gets the ball up to here. There's a guy three yards in front of me. He's just like, here you go. And then he gets it and then turns it into a seven yard gain. And it just makes the, the defense question so much. Is he going to like matrix this shit or is he not? Like It's really down to that. I think the jaw-dropping plays against a very talented Washington defense also stuck out watching him against Washington. 
you know, lots of production and experience with a quick offense. There was a lot of quick screens, uh, play action, and quick screens off play action, where you're looking at him, he's going like play action and throw, where he is snapping the ball and he's getting it out, where he's doing an RPO. It's nice to see him like that because you'll see those reps in the NFL. And then when we get to the negatives, uh, Williams gets chased down when scrambling to the boundary, showing a lack of explosiveness with that uh, with that side of his game. Rolling out to the sideline, maybe he's not the, the quickest guy to the sideline, kind of like a running back would, like Dylan Johnson, the Washington running back, kind of stands out to me when we talk about guys that struggle to get outside. Maybe Williams kind of has that same thing going on. Tendency to make the wrong decision or force the ball in desperate situation. The Notre Dame, name, uh, Notre Dame game and the uh the felt like he has to sort of aspect of it those two combined you have a good talented offense like notre dame they've got people flying around like crazy and the ability that he or i guess the expectation that caleb williams has is hey win us the football game by scoring a x amount of points above 35 we're gonna need to score points on every one of our drives to win this game and that's kind of how he feels like and that stood out early against um notre dame wasn't that great his pocket awareness is constantly a problem fumbles come along with the lack of awareness and his o-line wasn't great to, to you know come to his defense here i'm not going to dig on him and like sit there with it i think the o-line could help him out a lot more but he also has to be aware of what's at hand and the you know the play when it unfolds you need to be able to unfold with it and uh, there are times when the play does just completely unfold and Caleb has the ability to snowball the situation and lose more yards. But again, kind of comes back to the hero, you know, score points on every drive, get yards on every play sort of mentality that he seemed to have this last year. He has head, sc uh, head scratching plays more often than you'd like on some of the games. Some of the games were like pretty perfect, making good decisions. But there are some where like you see three turnover worthy plays in a game and you're kind of like, ooh, ooh, ah, don't like that. That very much uh, scared me, uh, uh, you know, every here and there. A little rambunctious as a runner sometimes has a problem, you know, he's not Jane Daniels esque where he's like straight up taking a, a 250 pound linebacker or an edge rusher just going, hey, I'm gonna, I think I'm stronger than you. It's not how that works. And uh, just gets a little rambunctious at times. Sometimes he just has overthrows or simply just puts too much on it. Often, uh, most times I see a miss from him. Most throws that hit the ground are overthrows. He just has a tendency to put a little too much on it at times. And then we'll get back around to the whole fumbling thing in the pocket awareness where the ball's back here, the ball's right here, and it's just getting swat out of his hand. It's getting boom. It's always out of his hand. I, I I couldn't I couldn't stand watching any more of the fumbles that Caleb Williams had. It was um quite unfortunate with how many times. So I think that's probably the biggest thing to work on for him: pocket awareness and and just overall fumbling the ball. Be more safe, everything like that. And when the NFL comes in, kicks in, I think he'd be good right away. Amazing player, uh, great upside. <laughs> Obviously, also a pretty solid floor if you ask me so that'll be all for me thanks for watching this video and go ahead and like go down subscribe go to the past content on the channel i'd appreciate it a lot a lot a lot and i'll see you guys next time deuces i've been talking for nearly two hours and it's killing me i have a dry throat i need to drink water get me out